So welcome to the first ever podcast with myself and Hursty Games. I'm a Sheffield United fan, Hursty is a QPR fan, and today we're going to be talking about um, everything to do with that game that is happening next weekend. We are recording this uh, as of the week before, FA Cup week, and uh, yeah, we've got lots of topics to, uh, to speak about, but this is probably going to be a bit of a series on my channel, so um, I'm going to hopefully get Hursty on most weeks and we're gonna have a chat about whatever we like. So obviously you can see at the side we have got Hursty Games aka Tom Hurst. How is it going mate? I'm doing I'm doing good. How are you doing? Yes I'm very good thank you. Uh, I've got a feeling quite a few people on my channel will already know who you are anyway but if you haven't already subscribed to Hursty go down into the description there will be a link there I hope anyway. If I've remembered, <laughs> there's definitely going to be a link there. I'll remind you. I'll yeah, remind you. good, good, good. Right, okay, so uh, I've got a few things to talk about, as uh, we've been through already. Um, mm. And, uh, yeah, let's start off by talking about the current form. I'm going to let you kick this off, because um, you didn't have a great start to the season, did you? Oh, God, no. No, we did not. Um, it's been, I mean, form has been, like, the biggest thing for us this season, because... We've always been quite a form-based team, so we we do have little sort of stints, but this season's kind of been like crazy. That It's been like that times 10. Mm. So we just had like, you know, we lose four or five games on the bounce, then we turn it around for three or four, and then we get draws, then we lose again. Like it, It's pretty much been, if we've got a win, we can expect another two or three. Mm. Then if we're going to draw, we can expect another two or three, and if we lose, it's it's kind of the same thing. So mm. it's... It's a bit tricky. Like our last, our last five have been very, very good. Three, three um, wins, and then we've had two draws. Um, but it's, it's a, it's a, it's a bit of a weird one. Like our form really is so up and down. Mm. With, I think obviously the the big changes from like the start of the season, we've had a lot of personnel changes. Not even into like signings. Like we've got a few loans and stuff in, but like the actual like starting eleven really does depend on our our run of form like as soon as we have a couple of changes our form seems to change a little bit mm. um, and that's very very noticeable right I see yeah because uh, what I noticed was you had a really really like you said a really bad start to the season losing yeah. and, and you even lost to us when we were we weren't playing very well at all at the beginning of the season yeah. we lost 4-0 to uh, uh, I think it was 4-0 3 or 4-0 against Middlesbrough away mm. and that was one of the worst performances I've seen from a Sheffield United team in a very very long time because uh, yeah. I didn't go myself but it was on the red button and we were right. horrendous at the back and then uh, we were obviously talking and stuff at this point we were yeah. uh, we were coming to Loftus Road to play you guys and uh, I was expecting a, a defeat to be honest and then I think that's kind of where we kicked on from because we, we went one yeah. nil down and then obviously we we uh, we ended up coming out and winning two one, and I think that like I said, I think that's where we we started from, because I think that was kind of like the restart of the season, and from there we won quite a few games. Uh, but I remember after kind of like thinking McLaren's going to get the sack, definitely yeah. going to get the sack. One of the first play uh, first managers to get the sack. I actually thought um, after that you kind of. We're winning so many games in a row, and you were—you must have been one of the um, the kind of uh, betting man's uh, tip to win each week. Because I remember seeing it every single week you were winning, probably like yeah. four or five, six games in a row, and I was like, "Wow, they've really picked up since that that poor start." Yeah, because I mean, when when we played against you, because our first game we lost uh, away to Preston, which you know, if, especially if you were to, like look at our form now and see what we're the t kind of teams we are beating, home and away, away we've never really had much of a good form. That's always been something I think has mm. always let us down in in the past. But to start off with a 1-0 loss against a team that we probably should beat was, was never good. Mm. We started okay against you guys. First half, I'd say we were the better team. Mm. Um, I think it was Eze scored, and obviously that mm. was such a big spark to everyone. Like, oh my God, Eze's going to be amazing. Yeah. Um, but when, I think it was Sharp scored, like just before half-time, and you could tell when we came out in the second half, mm. you guys were way more confident from that. Like, so yeah. much more confident. Um, and it, it really, it sticks in my mind, because McGoldrick came on, won a penalty, that at the time I was like, that was never a pen. Mm. I think in watching it back, I was like, okay, I'm a bit less like annoyed about that. 
yeah. he then scored it and then went off injured. And I, right. I mean, that was like, so he was on the pitch for like five minutes, scored a penalty. I was like, yeah, I'm off now. See you later. Yeah, yeah. I've um, done my job. But, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but then we then were pretty poor after that. Then we had our 7 1 loss to, to West Brom, mm. which was not worth thinking about. But yeah, yeah. then we, we turned it around. Like, you know, mm. four, four losses on the bounce to then turn it around massively. Mm. Um, get some big big wins um and again then we got losses and you know we then had like norwich um swansea we lost two nil in the cup to blackpool mm-hmm. um wow. yeah. which was appalling absolutely appalling um one of the worst games we've we've ever like played it was just dreadful mm. um but then again then we turn it around and it's like we've obviously we played villa's one of the only teams we've played twice now right and to, to have got a win at home and then a draw away against villa at the start of the season, I would have a hundred percent taken four points from two games against Villa. That's that's fantastic. Yeah. So um, it's it's been very topsy turvy, but yeah, I think McLaren's kind of um, turned things around enough. I think getting the the loan signings for him were massive. Mm. The players he got in on loan were have have proven to be very very effective. Right. Um, so who's he brought in on loan? Happy to, uh, we got uh, Jeff Cameron in on, on loan from Stoke, right, okay. who ha- has only played about four games, but mm. he's uh, he's injured at the moment. Right. Um, but he has been he was so instrumental in that original turnaround, mm. uh, like that holding midfield because we have um, Luongo who plays there, uh, who's in my opinion one of our best players, um, and he sat in so nicely next to him and gave him a bit of freedom. Mm. But um, he he's been very very instrumental. We got in obviously Naki Wells who yeah. Um, if we don't sign, there is something wrong. Yeah. Uh, if he doesn't join us on a permanent deal, I will give whatever money I have <laughs> to to pay a week's wages or a fraction of a week's wages. The only thing um, with Naki Wells yeah. is I wonder if uh, Huddersfield will want to keep hold of him just in case. That's because the if part. they if they get relegated, he could be a key player for them next season. You just don't but know. I think I might be wrong here, and it might actually be I have to look this up. I'm fairly sure he's at Burnley now. Oh. I'm almost 100% sure we've loaned him from Burnley. Oh, right, okay. Um, because I think they bought him and then loaned him out. Ah, oh, right, okay. I could be, I could be 100% wrong. Well, let me just check um, that out. Because... I was going to say, citation 100% needed. <laughs> um, but he's he's been You are so absolutely essential. right. So, Amber, thank God. Yeah, so Huddersfield, he went on loan to Huddersfield from Bradford... Then yep. Huddersfield signed him, and then... Oh, actually, he's been at Burnley a while. He's obviously not played many games, though. So he was at Huddersfield mm. for three years, from 2014 to 17. Played quite a lot of games, scored some goals. Yeah. And then Burnley signed him in 17, and he's only played nine games. So, yeah, you were absolutely yeah. right. Well, I'm, I'm hoping, then, in, in that sense... Obviously, Burnley mm. aren't having the best of type kind of things going their way anyway. Yeah. Um, hopefully... It will be somewhat. I think it'll be more achievable to sign him from Burnley than it will be Huddersfield. I think you're Definitely. right in saying that Huddersfield would see the form he's in and be like, "We want to keep him." Mm. And hopefully, Burnley are a little bit more like, "Well, he's doing well in the Championship. Yeah. If we were to go in for him, maybe that can swing our way a little bit." It's mm. it's just that the finance is our problem, really. Like we yeah. can't sign anyone, so it's mm. we have to wait till next year. Right. Um, so it's it's a tricky one, but he's he's been absolutely essential. Yeah. Um, we got Toma Hemed in from Brighton, who started off really, really well, mm-hmm. um, and again is injured, um, so that's not ideal. No. Um, and we got Angel Rangel, who for me has been our personal surprise package. He has been right. phenomenal, and again, we'll ignore the fact he's now currently injured, but <laughs> he's been absolutely phenomenal. Like, yeah. Honestly, he's been so, so good. Right, okay. Um... Yeah, Angel Rangel. Uh, one of them players that always sticks in your mind because of the name. Yeah, yeah. definitely. But he's, he's, always, he's, he's had a, a few good seasons in the Premiership with Swansea, though. So, um, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, good signing. Absolutely great signing. Um, so, uh, so, yeah, we've kind of already spoken about Naki Wells. I'll, I'll, I'll go back to speaking about um, United start in a second. But we, sure. did, we did have to, uh, to speak about Naki Wells. We will touch upon him. Uh, a bit later on because he was definitely one of the uh, strikers that I wanted us to sign so yeah. uh, I was a bit gutted about that I think I've already said that to you before anyway <laughs> yeah. but um, but yeah back on to well United start um, 
like I've just touched on a second ago, we started really badly. We we went one 0 up against uh, Swansea, first game of the season on Sky. Everything's great. Like we were we were, we played really well. Um, again, we played the, the same style every game. Lots and lots of passing, getting down the wings, putting crosses in, mm. um, and we did really well. And then scored a goal. Everyone were loving life, and then somehow went and lost two one. That kind of started off our really early decline. Uh, yeah. I know I you can't really say decline when we, we were like four or five games. Um, but then obviously we lost to uh, to Middlesbrough as I've just said, uh, and it wasn't a great start. And like I say, when we when we beat you guys, it it kind of uh, pushed us on, gives a bit of confidence. And then we we went and won quite a few games. We've had a little blip, another little blip um, mid season, and then we seem mm. to have come out of that again. So. I think yeah. it's probably going to be a bit of a roller coaster season. To be fair, like it. Well, it wasn't really a roller coaster last season. We kind of went up and then massively down. Um, yeah, it was a weird. You one. guys came out of the blocks very, very quickly. We did. Um, and yeah. I, th I think people were trying to kind of suss you guys out, and it took it took a while. But then I think when people kind of again, like you say, you, you guys were very threatening down the wings. Like mm -hmm. You've got a lot of pace out wide and you, you have finishes in that team. There are 100%. If you put the ball at the feet of pretty much any of your strikers, there is a big chance it's going to the back of the net. Mm. Um, and, like, okay, Billy Sharp. <laughs> Billy Sharp. Billy Sharp, um, yeah. <laughs> and I honestly think that you guys have got a few players that people don't necessarily, because they're not like household names, they're not mm. people that necessarily have, have made their way into the premiership a little bit or whatever they've, they've yep. built themselves up from the lower leagues mm. and are now really proving themselves in the championship yeah like i think it took teams a while to suss you out and then that happened a little bit near the end of the season and that i think confidence was maybe knocked a little bit and mm. i i again i seem to sort of remember there being a fair few changes near the end of the season for you guys i don't know whether that was like injuries or what or whether it was tactical because form was being lost a little bit and I think there, yeah. were a bit, there was a bit too much chop and change that it just stopped any kind of consistency mm. and, and then form for you well I'd have to say uh, a lot of, a lot of fans do say this um, and the the dip kind of came when Paul Coos got injured when he broke right. his leg um, against uh, Burton uh, we were flying and then he broke his leg and we didn't really well, we signed uh, John Lundstrom, and he's a nice footballer, uh, but there were way too much pressure on his shoulders because um, Paul Coots was kind of that guy who sits in front of the defence and starts all the attacks. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And we kind of missed that because John Fleck's one of those players that kind of likes to pick the ball up from deep and run with it. Coots didn't do that. Coots sat in, let Fleck do all that stuff, and Coots sat in and, and dictated play. Um, so when Coots got injured, we definitely missed that, but I don't think it was all because Paul Coots got injured, the decline happened, which a lot of fans do think that, which I think is a bit naive to say. I think mm. it just we just lost a lot of confidence. Um, maybe one or, th one or two things didn't go our way. We had a lot of funny um, funny results last season, whereas like, um, we'd concede lots of goals towards the end of the game. Do you know what I mean? You just need to take the ball into the corner or you just need to yeah. have have a bit more um, confidence on the ball because they are some really good footballers, really um, really confident footballers, but once we go kind of 1-0 up or 2-1 up or something like that, seem to lose the ability to pass a ball six, right. <laughs> six yards because yeah. they just think... This ten minutes left. Look at look. I think sometimes they look at themselves and we're like, look at us. We're we're ex League One, League Two players playing mm -hmm. the championship, and then you come up against players like your Aston Villas last season, your Cardiffs and and teams like that. And I think sometimes they they get like like this season with Stoke. We um, we were one 0 up against Stoke, and then we kind of just again we couldn't pass the ball. And you look at players and you're looking at um, Joe Allen's, your uh, Berahino's, your McLean's, yeah. all the players, Tom Inns. Look at these players and you're like, we shouldn't be beating them. But mm -hmm. they deserve to be. 
So it's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's just it's just keeping that confidence. Like it's it's fine being one nil down or it being nil nil or something like that. And you're like, let's go at them, let's let's do this, let's do that. But it's when you're in front, and then you're like, oh god, we're in front, we're in front. And we lost, we conceded a lot of late goals last season, and I think that knocked the confidence massively. So uh, it's, it's definitely easier to to get like that when there's something to lose. Mm. Like it's when when you're like you say when you're one nil down or when it's nil nil, you've kind of you can throw the kitchen sink in there and, and be like, well, we'll give it a go because what we've got to lose. Yeah. yeah. Whereas if you're you're about to get three points, it's like, oh, we've got to be careful. We've got to, and you don't necessarily play. You, tactics just seem to go out the window mm. and, and sort of form it and whatever. It's like, well, we just need to get rid of the ball, get it out of our box, get it whatever, and it's just. Yeah, everything becomes panic central. Absolutely, I definitely, I definitely hear that. Definitely hear that. Yeah, um, I'm a little bit wary that we uh, we've been talking for probably about 15 minutes and we've not got past the second point. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's move on to uh, to key players. Uh, well, uh, we've I think we've we've probably touched on this a little bit before, but um, I'll I'll just quickly go through how I'm seeing the match to go and and who I think our key players are. Obviously, Billy yeah. Sharp is banging form at the moment. No one expected him to, to score as many goals as what he did. And again, we're going to mm. we're gonna touch on that later on. Um, but um, yeah, I think he's joint top goal scorer at the moment. Which yeah, is him and uh, Abraham. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, so yeah, that is mad thinking about that at the beginning of the season because um, he's, he's been in and out of the team in the past two seasons. Season before, obviously, banged in loads and loads of goals in League One, but he were expected to. And the Championship, not so much. So, yeah, he's doing really well at the moment. We're uh, we're enjoying. Well, the thing the thing is, when we create chances, he will score. But if we're not creating them chances, he's not going to create them himself. He's not that yeah, player, yeah. and I think everyone knows he's a that he is. He is. So if you if you put the ball in front of him, he will put it in the back of the net. Um, he's. I think he's only really missed one big chance this season, and it was a big one. It was against Leeds, uh, header at the back post, and it was like one of those. It's like that is Billy Sharp's oh, goal, yeah. Yeah, and, and we went we went on and, and lost in the end to a to a goalkeeping mm. error. But uh, but yeah, he's, he's he's had a great season. Uh, I think David McGoldrick's definitely kind of um, compliments him brilliantly because he's the guy that that comes off. Um, the defender picks the ball up. He likes his little uh, little flicks, little tricks, and stuff like that. But he's a nice player to watch, and I think the reason why he's not getting injured at United, um, like he has been all his career, is because he's not having to do as much donkey work. Um, yeah. I I was watching. Uh, I don't know if you know a guy called Benjamin Bloom. Uh, hopefully, we're watching this. Hi, Benjamin, if you are. Um, Benjamin is an Ipswich Town fan. And he right. does a lot of podcasts, and uh, and he he was speaking about David McGoldrick when we played the Ips, uh, just before the Ipswich game, and he said the same thing. He said that they were playing him in in a lot more kind of like a wide role, and right. he was having to come back and and chase and things like that. And when he when he doesn't have to do that, when you've got other players around him that does that, he's like every now and again he might. Uh, run back and chase and, and, and try and win the ball back but we don't need him to do that and I think that's one of the main reasons why he's not getting injured uh, touch wood God I shouldn't have said that should I uh, and then we've we've obviously got we've brought in Ollie Norwood who's been outstanding yeah he's he's different class he's yeah different he is class. I've got to say out of all the names on the team sheet I think that's one of the names that people are like he's a really good player like yeah. the rest of them are kind of like not nobodies, but players that have come through, like you said, come through the leagues, and they're all play. I've got to say, I think every single player is is probably playing the best football of the career at the moment at United. Um, Fair enough. Possible. Well, yeah, even Billy Sharp, possibly. Um, yeah, yeah, you could. Well, it's hard to argue it, especially when you look at the the stats. Like, it, I mean, especially like right now, I think. You guys are the second most informed team in the championship behind Hull. Right. Like the the form you guys are on mm. is is it's definitely noticeable. Like yeah, the players players are playing very very well. And like you said, people that aren't necessarily not everyone's going to know. They might think, oh, I know that now. Like oh, I recognise mm -hmm. Sharp. I recognise Norwood. And they they just they play 
very, very good. You guys have always had a really good team, like a really good actual... If you put 11 players on the pitch, they'll play well together. Yeah. Even if they're not the best players in the league. Yeah, they always yeah. seem to, to pull together. And that's that's from league I, from when I've sort of watched a little bits of obviously you guys in League One and, and mm-hmm. what have you and, and going forward. So it's it's definitely noticeable that you guys don't always rely on bigger names, shall we yeah. say. Yeah. I think that's that's a Chris Wilder team though, I think. Wherever he goes, even if I, I don't know, um he got the Man United job tomorrow, uh it, he would still get that um that team spirit going. I think Sometimes managers struggle with big names and things like that, um, but I think as long as you've got the respect of your of your team, um, and you're all pulling in the right direction, I think I think a Chris Wilder team um, can beat anyone, and I, and I, mm-hmm. I, I, th- I think he's done wonders. I um, I'm just a little bit worried that he's going to leave us at some point uh, yeah. if, if we don't if we don't get promoted in the next couple of seasons, but. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll let you. I'll let you carry on. Um, I'll let you talk about QPR for a little bit now. Yeah, I mean, no it. stress, no stress. Um, I think for us, our our beautiful thing at the moment is our players who are playing at their best, apart from maybe maybe Naki Wells, mm-hmm. um, aren't the players you necessarily expect. Yeah. So, like, if I said to you, Pavel Jolek, is that a name that rings rings a bell with you? And not at all, no. Not at all. No. He is an absolute machine. Yeah. Uh, he's our joint joint top goal scorer um, with Wells and Freeman. Mm-hmm. Wow. And he is absolutely. He's just class. He does so much work. Mm. I think I don't think he actually owns a car because I think he just likes running everywhere. I don't think he <laughs> physically stops running. Yeah. Um, he is an absolute machine. And I think it's it's players like him at the moment that mm-hmm. are under the radar a little bit that will win us games right now. Right. Like he just he just pops up with a goal or pops up with a fantastic pass and a, mm-hmm. a great assist. Like he um, he assisted, I think technically both goals in the Villa game. Right. Um, and he is just a workhorse. He just will not stop going. And I think he's. I honestly think he's a big big win factor for us. Mm. Um, I'm fairly sure you're probably expecting me to say Eze being yeah. up there. Yeah, yeah. Um, he he is you know different what? class. He's he's different class on his day. Right. Okay. At the moment, there are I think far too many times where he's being found accountable for not doing enough right. or not doing anything almost at times. Hmm. Um, in the Reading game, where we at home, he might as well have not been on the pitch for about seventy five minutes. He really. <laughs> really didn't do anything the Ipswich game yeah he got subbed off in like the 75th minute again right. didn't really do anything mm. um, and there were literally calls from the, the crowd to like take him off at half time he really just wasn't getting in the game wow um, he eventually got off and the guy who came on for him Ilias Chair again I don't expect you to know him um, <laughs> was fantastic made yeah. our third goal and he absolutely shone and I think he he either if he's going to play Mm-hmm. In the Leeds game and or the Sheffield United game, he needs a big game. Yeah. He needs a big game. Obviously, he scored against Villa. Fantastic. Mm. He was very quiet. He missed one or two easiest chance. He missed one for about six yards out and uh, powered it over the bar. Right. Um, so he needs a big, big game. And yeah. it's going to come. I just don't know when. I'm yeah. thinking Preston. I think Preston will be when it happens. But Not us. That's, uh, that's a couple of weeks away. No, I don't. <laughs> Again, away, I don't know. It's tricky because our away form has never been fantastic. Yeah. Although saying that, we've got four points from our last two, and that mm-hmm. was against Villa and Forest. So that's the, it's not bad points to pick up. No, no, um, it's not, no. It's it's going to be tricky. I think it, it also depends on who plays for us tomorrow mm-hmm. in, in the cup game. Because um, I think a few people will get a rest. Yeah. Um, and I think he might be one of them. I don't think he's going to play tomorrow. So no. I think he's he's definitely got something to, uh, to live up to. Yeah. Um, but... Defensively, <clears throat> I'm. I've got so much confidence in Lumley, our goalkeeper. It's yeah. unreal. It's unreal. Honestly, you can put him between the sticks. It's how I felt about Smithies when we had Smithies. Mm. Put him between the sticks, and I I will forever be confident. It doesn't matter who we're up against that we yeah. can get a clean sheet. Um, so, for me, the big big win factors will be Pavel Jolek if he plays. Mm. Um, just being an absolute workhorse, um, and. 
Honestly, it's, it's got to be Naki Wells. So yeah, let's let's just go on and, and talk about the Loftus Road game. Um, earlier on in the season, it was was it third or fourth game, or, or was it? Oh no, it was more than that, weren't it? Uh, second. Oh, was it? Second. Fairly sure. Oh, okay. uh, I, I believe you. I believe, especially after the Naki Wells uh, Burnley <laughs> Burnley signing, I'm definitely going to believe you on that one. Um, so yeah, we uh, we obviously went one 0 down as they scored. Uh, nice finish. Was was it just outside the box? Yeah, just outside. Yeah, and then uh, we came back with a Billy Sharp tapping, um, where, where it loves to be in the in the six yard box, and uh, and then Debbie McGoldrick um, won as a penalty. I know you. Yeah, pretty sure he won it. <laughs> scored it, and, and then hurt himself. Yeah, <laughs> I know you uh, you weren't too sure about whether it was a penalty or not, but uh, but yeah, I'll let you at the time. At the time, yeah. Yeah, I'll let I'll let you start talking about that anyway because I wasn't at the game, so. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, I'll let you um, you inform us on what happened. Yeah, I mean, it was, I think obviously we, we touched on it a little bit um, before, but I would say first half we played pretty well. We came out of the blocks a little bit because we didn't play well against Preston. Mm. Um, and I think that our big issue was we played some good football and you guys were just soaking it all up mm. 100%. Like you guys were just taking it all in. Um, and I think we were playing a few people at that point that we, let's just say they wouldn't get anywhere near the team right now. Right, um, okay. Like we Ooh. had Idris Asilla was starting for us, who hasn't played probably since we signed Wells and Hemed. Mm. I don't think he's even been on the bench since right. then. Right. Um, and I think we're actually looking to sell him this transfer window. Mm. So, um, like, I think when I, I looked at the squads, there were five people in that lineup mm. that I can almost promise you won't be in the lineup when we come to play against you guys. Right. Um, so I think the game itself, second half, you guys really sussed us. Mm. Like, we couldn't really get anywhere near you. I mean, Henderson, I think, is one of the best keepers in the league mm. um, on his day, 100%. Like, yeah, he makes a couple of mistakes, but he's, he's what, like 20, 21, something like that, isn't he? He's quite young, 23 maybe. Yeah, I, th I think that he will be one of the... I, I think he'll be there for a long time. If not a Premiership goalkeeper, he'll definitely be a top-end Championship goalkeeper. Um, he's obviously a loan from Man United. Um, mm -hmm. And it just depends what happens with De Gea because I might be wrong, but uh, Johnston, um, do you know who plays for West Brom? Yeah. I think they've signed him now. I think Man United have let yeah, him go. Yeah, Yeah. So I think he's going to be... In and around the Man United team, um, I don't think we'll be able to sign him. Um, but yeah, I, I, it depends what happens with De Gea. If De Gea leaves and goes to Spain, then I think they'll bring him back and try and. No, I'm not saying that's going to happen this season, but yeah, yeah. I don't think he's he's ready just yet. He does make some mistakes, as, as you said. Uh, he's a great shot stopper. I've got to say, he's a brilliant shot 100%. stopper. Uh, and um, and yeah, it'd be great to sign him, but. Yeah, I can't see it myself. But uh, I think if you guys were to go up this year, hmm. you would quite possibly get him either back on loan again, or you'd I think at least try and like inquire about a signing. Hmm. Um, just because I think, I mean, he seems to enjoy his time there. Hmm. He's obviously a big fan favorite from what I hear and what I see. Yeah. Um, and I I think that it wouldn't be a bad move for him. Hmm. Um, I think if he could if he could help you guys stay in at least playoffs. Yeah. That's that's going to do absolute credit for him, mm. um, and it will just show again more reliable. Like, what's the word I'm looking for? More trust in him mm. from Sheffield United as well. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, um, yeah. It seems like he's he's loving his time here. From from what you see on Instagram and Twitter, and uh, every time, uh, I'll, I'll I'll just let you let you know this. So, so if um, if it happens, you'll uh, you'll be ready for it because I forget all okay. the time. But uh, I don't know if you've seen already on like um, Twitter and stuff. But every time we score a goal, he runs over to the south stand, which will be the right to you, yeah. and uh, he, he sprints probably a good, I don't know, ten, fifteen, twenty meters, and slides on his knees every single yeah, time, and then goes absolutely <laughs> mental. And that's that's the type of thing that you don't get from from uh, most goalkeepers. I've never seen that. Well. You very rarely see that. He celebrates Not every many. single goal. Yeah. yeah. And I can't remember which goal it was now, uh, but it was towards the beginning of the season. It might have even been Villa when we tonked Villa 4-1. But, uh, 
but uh, he ran the whole length of the field to celebrate with him at the other end of the ground. Um, mm -hmm. And it's, it's things like that that get you to become a fan favourite. Obviously, yeah, you've, you've got to back it up with the, um, with the performances, but mm -hmm. he's doing both, and everyone seems to love him. Um, and, and that's the thing, he made... Probably, I'd, I'd probably say it was a mistake against Stoke when uh, Joe Allen whipped it around the, the wall and he probably should have done better. But the, yeah. the fact that he's a fan favourite made people be less harsh on him, which is, which is obviously great. Like, you don't, wanna, you don't want anyone to get lots and lots of stake, especially not a goalkeeper, because it's, it's a confidence position, definitely. Just like, yeah, a, just like a striker. If a midfielder plays a bad pass... Everyone gets on with it. No one, no one even talks about it. But if a striker misses a, a really good opportunity, or a goalkeeper, I don't know, drops a ball in, in the back of his own net, then um, yeah, it, yeah, it, it definitely affects confidence. Definitely, um, definitely. And I think that's one big one for us because, again, going to players that played in that game, Ingram was our number one keeper. Mm -hmm. He will get nowhere near the team right now because right. his confidence was so knocked mm. from like those first four or five games, conceded in, I think, every game. I don't know if he was in... We did win a cup game at the start of the season against Peter, Peter I think it was. Mm. Um, I don't know if he played that game, but his confidence was absolutely through the floor. Mm. And obviously, going and conceding seven against West Brom, mm. like, that's never going to fill a, a keeper with confidence. And he got so much stick from the fans, like, so much stick. Yeah. Like, I mean, I, I'm, I'm going to say I know him on a personal level. I went to school with him. Oh, right. Um, and um, he he was never a goal... I don't ever remember him as a goalkeeper. I'm fairly sure he was a defender when he was at school. Right. Um, but he was a really good shot stopper at Wickham. Mm -hmm. um, and he is a good shot stopper. But when he stopped stopping shots, it was like, well, what can he actually do then? Yeah. Like, he doesn't command his box very well. Um, he His distribution's pretty poor. Mm. And it was a little bit like, well, what can he do if he's if he's not stopping seven seven goals in one game? Yeah. What's the point? And and he got a lot of stick from that. And I, his confidence is absolutely through the floor. Yeah. Absolutely through the floor. And obviously with Lumley coming in and and doing as well as he has done. Mm. Um, I, yeah. Conf I I 100% agree about the the goalkeeper mm. being a big big confidence position. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. And I think sometimes. That Every you've got to say there's not many goalkeepers where you would say they're not a good shot stopper, because that's your bread and butter really, isn't it? In in training, yeah. you, you you can't you can't kind of train uh, a, a a match situation, but you can you can have a goalkeeping coach smashing balls at you smashing, like a yeah, yeah, yeah. hundred times a week or something like that. And a goalkeeper's got to be a good shot shot stopper, but I think it's the whole commanding your box. Thing that that a lot of goalkeepers struggle with. There's not many that I can think of off the top of my head where I think, where because you used to see it like your Peter Schmeichels and I. This is a re exactly who came to mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but I, the one player that came to mind for me, it's a really random name, Mark Poom. Do you remember Mark Poom? Uh, <laughs> it's, no. it's really <laughs> random. I used to play for Derby and a couple of other English teams, but I remember going to oh, going yeah. to Derby. And watching him run from his line, from a corner, run from his line, nearly to the 18-yard box and taking a ball in the air. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, it's just crazy. And, and the thing is, yeah. there's so many goalkeepers. Well, like I said, there's, there's not many goalkeepers nowadays that you would even come to, like, the penalty spot and take a ball. Yeah. If, and, and if they did, they wouldn't be taking it, they'd be punching it. Yeah, I agree. Definitely. I agree. Um, and that's, there's nothing wrong with punching a ball, but... This de it's definitely it was definitely an English mentality as a goalkeeper. You need to come out and catch the ball, and mm -hmm. it, it's possibly sort of like um, foreign players coming into the game and foreign managers and things like that. And yeah, don't get me wrong, punching a ball is definitely a good idea when you are struggling to catch it. But I think not enough goalkeepers catch balls these days. And I think no, I as a young goalkeeper, going back to what we were taught, actually how we got here was uh, the Dean Henderson thing, and I I think. He's he could be better when it comes to distribution and uh, and, right. and crosses and things like that because he's had a couple of time a couple of hairy moments where he's come out for something and not quite got there, but with um, yeah we've not had too many of them this season. Mm -hmm. But uh, but yeah, um, 
the next point I've got is Naki Wells. Um, and we've said quite a bit. Oh, Lord and Savior. <laughs> yeah. And uh, again, I just wish we'd have signed him. I really do wish we'd have signed him because I think he'd have been perf a perfect strike partner for one of those uh, up front. Mm. I think him and, him and Billy Sharp would be absolutely lethal because mm. the work Naki Wells puts in, like you talk about McGoldrick coming back sometimes, doing the little flicks past people, mm. the, the work he does on and off the ball is just so noticeable. Like yeah. it's, it's it, oh man, honestly, I think if we, if we had him at the start of the season... I'm not saying he single-handedly would have like turned some results around, mm. but like obviously our our other main options um, are Idris Silla, who I know a lot of fans really really don't like. I don't hate him, mm. but again, I think his confidence is through the floor. He doesn't seem to have much faith from the manager, yeah. And therefore, you know, and I, I, if he's not training well, if he's not scoring the goals, which he wasn't, that's fair enough. Yeah. But our other option is Matt Smith, who is about seven foot tall. Yeah. He'll come on in the 80th minute and he'll look like he's run a marathon. Like <laughs> he, he's just he's just not an agile guy. No. He's just not an agile guy. I love him. I love him to bits. Mm. But like Naki Wells just brings a complete new dimension yeah. to the game entirely. Mm. Um, and it's been the first time. The only other player recently that would have made the same kind of runs as him is Washington. Yeah. But Naki Wells is finishing a lot more of these chances. Mm. That's, well, that's basically the main the main difference for us yeah and as, as we've spoken about Naki Wells quite a bit up to now uh, we will you've led me right into the next point brilliantly Connor, Connor <laughs> Washington yeah so uh, I'll tell you how we started and then you tell okay. me what uh, what is ha how you feel what's, what's going to happen after because uh, he, he, he started he, he came on uh, against somebody, I think we were we were struggling. No, we weren't. No, we weren't. Tell a lie. I think we were winning the game. I can't remember who it was against, but he came on and he looked like he was a little boy, a lost little boy, just running around in circles like like a dog. He was kind of like a right. dog chasing chasing a bone, and he was getting nowhere near it. Um, and I was like, God, I, c I can see why QPR fans gave him so much stick. However. He has definitely turned that around. Um, he's not scored yeah. a goal yet, but mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, that doesn't matter. He's not. I don't think he's really had one good enough opportunity to score a goal, and we. I don't think we care about that because it's the work that he does. Um, he's, don't get me wrong. He's not going to be starting every week. He's, he's not yeah, going to yeah. start many games this season. I wouldn't have thought. But what he does off here is that running in behind, um, definitely holding the ball up for for a little. I know he's not the strongest guy in the world, but he's getting in behind. He's he's stretching defenses. He's um, bringing players into the game. I, I like him. I think now um, we've uh, we've obviously got Leon Clark back. I don't think he's even going to come on as much as what he he was before. Yeah. But um, he has started a couple of games, and it's it's uh, it's kind of like tactics because he's not big and strong. We've not really got that big and strong striker. We've got Leon Clark, but he's not. He, he, he might bully you every now and again, bully a defence, but he's not yeah. one of those players that's gonna. He's not like a Matt Smith. He's not gonna be like winning balls in the air constantly. He's not gonna be knocking players yeah, out yeah, of the yeah. way. Other, well, unless he's playing against Wednesday, and then <laughs> it, it's just it's then nothing stopping. Well, that's it. It's just one of them things. Obviously, yeah, yeah. when when players play against uh, teams that they've they've uh, they've played for before, or they've got bad blood, with they, they're obviously going to try their best. And Leon Clark yeah. seems like one of those players, but well, he is one of those players. <laughs> but um, but yeah, Connor Washington, he's done all right. Uh, like I said, I don't think he's going to get that much more game time, but. Well, I, I know that when we need when he comes on, we know what he offers us. I think he's, it's a plan B. Uh, it's kind of like stretching yeah. the defence, trying to create space. And, uh, yeah, he does what he does well. And I just I kind of want him to, to get some game time and score a couple of goals. I really do, because I think that'll give him a, a hell of a lot of confidence. Yeah, and I, I think, honestly, and I know this is going to be a very unpopular opinion with a lot of QPR fans, but I want the exact same. I, it would please me so much for him to actually mm. come on, 
get some goals, get a couple of starts and, and score in those. Like, honestly, mm. he, the, is, the issue was, and like you said, obviously, he doesn't score. And for you guys, you're like, we don't mind that much because of the work he does. Mm. He was exactly the same at QPR. The issue was, he was our starting striker. Right, uh, yeah. If he's, if he's not going to get you goals, sometimes the, the work ethic isn't enough. Yeah. And I get that because, honestly, if he played, if he played 90 minutes every week, he was running for 90 minutes mm. every week. He was closing down defenders. He was, you know, trying to get the ball back. He was making these great runs down the wing and, and, and doing whatever else he could. Yeah. But then as soon as he got in front of that goal, he just couldn't find the back of the net. Mm. He, it, just, it just didn't click for him. And it was almost like he was like, I need to prove a point, I need to prove a point, I need to prove a point. Gets the ball, gets in front of the goal and goes, oh my God, I haven't scored in the longest time. Yeah. And it just doesn't work for him. And that that sucked, man. Like honestly, yeah. I I wanted nothing more than for it to work for him. He, I absolutely loved him because he was so good at Peterborough. He was mm. unbelievable. Mm. He was just a complete machine. Mm. And we signed him, and I thought this is going to be quality. Yeah. He is exactly the player we need. It's going to do absolute bits. He just reminded me. I thought it was going to be. We had a player called Hyder Helgerson. Oh yeah. Smaller yeah, guy. Yeah, I know what you mean. Absolute machine of a player. Mm. Just got goals for fun. And I thought it was going to be just like that, and it just didn't work out. And I was gutted. I was absolutely gutted. But then when we sold him, like I said to you, I was like, I don't mind that he's gone, mm-hmm. as long as we replace him with somebody who's going to put the work ethic in. But they just need to find the back of the net a lot more than he did. Yeah. And it, it honestly, I just, I wanted to score. I want to look at a Sheffield. <laughs> obviously, not this weekend. Not like <laughs> in the next couple of years. Yeah. Um, I want to look at a Sheffield United score sheet and see Connor Washington's name on there. Mm. I honestly. I'll tell you what you might do tomorrow in the uh, the FA Cup match against Barnet because I think he'll probably start. I think I think he'll probably try and try and play a few lads that haven't had as much game time, and and to be honest, um, what I what I will say is, our issue this season and last season has always well has been for the last couple of years we haven't had enough reinforcements. um, Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think we're starting to build that, but at the same time, looking at the bench, it doesn't strike fear into anyone. And and I'm don't don't get me wrong. You look at the whole team, and you, it doesn't strike fear into you because it's not a they're not big names like you said earlier. But yeah, um, I look at the bench and I think um, I'm not sure who would bring on, who would improve okay. improve anything. So Leon Clark now coming back, he obviously had a purple patch last season. So mm-hmm. um, we're, we're trying to get him back into that. Uh, he had a, he didn't have a great end to the season. He had a weird purple patch within like maybe a month or two, and he scored literally. Yeah, th- yeah, 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 and he scored like seventy five percent of his goals in those months. Mm. Uh, obviously chipped in with a couple of beginning of the season towards the end of the season as well, but. Um, we need to get him back into that, but um, I think he might start tomorrow with Washington, um, and I think he'll mm. play some some other lads that haven't quite had as much game time. But like I say, yeah. the bench is not a great bench. It's really not. Other than other than Leon Clark coming on, maybe get you a goal. Um, yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't bring any of them on. And uh, there's right. Coots on the bench, but you're never gonna need to bring Coots on. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's not quite a situational player. That's a, you start with him for a reason, or yeah. he's not playing. Yeah, I get and that. he and he come like if we if we are like say one 0 up or two one up or something like that, it might bring him on just to kind of show things up. But he's never a player that you desperately need to bring on. He's and and it's always going to be a, it's got to be a striker and attacking midfielder that you bring on that you need kind of like to to make something happen. But uh, yeah, like I said, the bench isn't great. Uh, but we'll uh, we'll get on to the next point because I am not great at this. <laughs> because right, we're okay. so um, Billy Shaw, top goal scorer uh, yes. of the last um, nineteen years now. No, eighteen years. Yeah. Well, eighteen and a bit. Yeah, since since uh, the year two thousand, Billy Sharp has scored two hundred and twenty goals in. 469 games, I want to say. Mm, um, so it's all, yeah, I'll, I'll take your word. Yeah, that. it's something <laughs> like that anyway. It's definitely 220 goals. And i uh, got to say, in the last... I think what's what's kind of um, done Billy Sharp wonders is the last two seasons, I would say. 
the, like I said earlier, in the in League One, you expect him to score. Uh, yeah. he, he's, the the year before Wilder were in charge, we had Nigel Atkins, and it was one of the most horrendous years to be a Blade. And Billy Sharp still scored about 16, 18 goals, I think, something like that, in a terrible, yeah. terrible team. Such a bad team. And... Um, and yeah, it's just it's just so good to see him still scoring goals at this level, because he's had he's yeah. had a, a brief uh, flirt with the Premiership, but he's not had much game time in the Prem, and he's not scored many goals in the Prem. Uh, it's mostly been Championship throughout his career. And whenever I'm thought when he left Leeds and came to us, it was like he's now a League One player, and he's just proved everybody right. wrong. Yeah, yeah, so. definitely. And and again, I think it's one of those things of you know of Billy Sharp, mm. and you kind of think like, ah, uh, we can we can keep Billy Sharp out, mm. and you can't. Like you you can't. It, it, he will find a way to score. Mm. He will get himself a goal. And I think that's it's one of those players that I think part of the reason he's so effective is because people don't give him the credit he deserves. Yeah. That that to me is a big, big yeah. factor. I don't think you can overlook him, and so many people I think do. Yeah. I think I think the thing is with Billy Sharp, you can you can brush him to one side. A, a, a striker can brush him to one side. He's not got he's not got that strength. He's not got that speed. He's just got mm. that nous of being in the right place at the right time. And he's a great and yeah, he's a great definitely. finisher. Those are his two biggest assets, and that's what he's, he's based his career on. And you've got to say, yeah. fair play to him. Yeah, his positioning is fantastic. He know he knows he's not the quickest. Mm. He knows he's not the strongest. So he goes. Where can I put myself where I don't need to be either of those things mm. to find the back of the net? Yeah. And that's what he does. He's he is a great player for people like obviously kids like growing up that can't outpace everyone, can't outmuscle everyone. Mm. It's a perfect player to watch yeah. because he can't and he still scores yeah. as many goals as he wants to. The only thing I would say about that is that um you don't have you don't find many of those players in the top divisions of, of yeah, leagues. Yeah. Um, so, like in the Premiership, I can't think of of one player who's not either really fast, really strong. Um, they were one other thing I was thinking of, but you are either going to have your Diego Costa up front, who's big, strong, uh, knocks yeah. knocks defenders out of the way, or you're going to have your um, Aguero, really quick. Good finisher, yeah. but maybe maybe someone like Hernandez, like now. Obviously, he was pretty quick when he was at United, mm. but he hasn't quite got that extra pace now. He's at West Ham, yeah. But his awareness gets him goals. Mm. Like he's he's always the first to react to something, mm. and he knows where to put himself. Yeah, kind of reminds me a little bit like that. Yeah. but maybe he's he's probably got a little bit of pace on Billy Sharp, I imagine. Yeah, I think I, I don't think Billy Sharp's ever really had that much pace. Uh, yeah. But uh, but no, it's it's great to see him get that, and I, I know a lot of lot, lot of clubs hate him. Um, mm. And that's because of who he is. Because what he does is he is is a bit of a wind up merchant. Yeah, yeah, yeah gotcha. And uh, I think he'll he'd probably agree to that himself. To be fair, um, like when he scored against, um, oh, I forgot who we just played. Uh, it was was it Derby? I think it was Derby. He scored against Derby, but they was they were calling him names, saying that he wasn't the skinniest of chaps anyway. And then right, as okay. as he scored, ran away. He pretend like he he was. Uh, Making it out that he got a big belly, uh, so right. it's kind of one of them things. That's what Billy Sharp does when he he'll score. If you give him if you give him crap, he'll give it you back. And yeah. if you don't, then he won't. He's he's not going to go and gloat to a, to a fan base that don't really care about him. But if you That's if you give him rubbish, he'll he'll give it back. Um, but but yeah, um, and uh, it's a little bit top heavy with Sheffield United uh, topics, but it needs to be. Because, um, yeah, I don't know if you've seen all over Twitter who we are possibly signing. And by the time this podcast yeah. come out, we will know if he has signed or not. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Gary Medine. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know what to say. We could th This could be a podcast all on its own, to be honest. Um, because... Probably. Probably. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I was to be honest. I was going to do a video on him, and then I thought, no, we'll, I'll, I'll leave it for the podcast. Um, but um, well, the, the main thing was as well. He's not signed yet. We don't know if he's going to sign. Yeah, it's not definitely. No, but um, there's a lot of a lot of reliable sources coming out saying that he is set to sign. So I don't know when it's going to be, but it's 
I think it will happen. Mm-hmm. And I can be honest with you, I think 90 to 95% of the fans do not want him at Premier League. Yeah, and I mean, with with certain history, that like like you say, the thing is, it's not even go the... to clubs to prove a point. Yeah, yeah. And I think that he's really going to struggle to prove a point. Like he's going to get no assistance in in trying to show any like any kind of support to be like, oh, well, you're now a blade, and we'll we'll give you benefit of the doubt. Mm. That's not going to happen. No, that's that is not going to happen. He's not going to get a, a basket of roses to to welcome him in. No, definitely not. And the, and the thing is, I, I was, I've been speaking about this quite a bit. Uh, in the last, well, yesterday really, because that's when it came out, and um, there were there's two players that that spring to mind: Leon Clark at H mm-hmm. Sheffield Wednesday. Uh, yeah. Always, he's another bit of a wind up merchant when he wants to be, um, and we didn't particularly want him there, but he's 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 a well, I won't say a fan's favourite, but he's everyone loves him. Like obviously, he had that yeah. purple patch last season, and he seems like he's actually enjoying playing football. I've never seen him with as much of a smile on his face because he definitely does, he, he very rarely smiles. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> so uh, and, and that's nice to see. Also, I don't know, I don't know if you'll remember him, he's called Richard Creswell. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, he used to play for Wednesday, uh, when a, a few other clubs, and then we signed him and we hated him basically because he was another one of those that when you played Wednesday, he would like score a goal and then glow and stuff like that. And we just didn't like him for yeah. some reason. He became an absolute legend because of just the work that he put in. And I think I think it's great when we've had loads of Wednesday players that have come to United and had a good career. But mm-hmm. but it's not just about United Wednesday. It's it's yeah, everything yeah, yeah. else that comes with him. So yeah, it's not just about the Wednesday connection that, that Gary Medine's got. It's the fact that he's uh, gone to jail for beating people up, breaking yeah. people's jaws. Um, he, he seems to love a drink. You've seen, I've seen so many videos of him just being like really, really drunk in nightclubs and stuff, and it it, it just doesn't seem a, a good fit. Like yeah. Chris Chris Wilder, this is this is the best. I've got to say, from an outsider, this seems like the best dressing room we've ever had. Um, and that all comes that must come from Chris Wilder and obviously the lads and I can't see him being a very uh, good influence on the on the yeah, squad it, it would it would seem a bit like a cat amongst the pigeons like a an, a bit of an out of place sort of person like you say almost like an outsider going in but that outsider is willing to disrupt what's going on mm. yeah, well that's, that's what I thought about that's what I thought about Leon Clark when we signed him yeah. because he seemed like a loner he seemed, right. he seemed like a loner. He, he didn't really have much of an affiliation with many teams. Like obviously had so many different clubs. Yeah. I just felt like um, when he when he came in, he, he didn't really care. And mm-hmm. I think he's he's kind of like obviously everyone loves to be loved. And I think once you when you score goals, fans will like you. Yeah. And I think that that's the same with Medine. I think if he did come into come into the team and scored goals. I think people would, because we're all fickle, aren't we, football fans? Oh, God, yeah, 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 yeah. If, if, if uh, like, for instance, I said this to my mate the other day, we signed Marlon King uh, a few years back in League One, mm-hmm. and he'd, he'd, he'd got a bit of a checkered past, and um, and, he's, and uh, I didn't want him particularly there, nobody else wanted him there, and then he went and scored, and then everyone's cheering and yeah. loving life, and it's like, what everyone forgets about it. Yeah, yeah exactly, um, and I think... If Medin, I think Medin's got a lot to kind of um, a lot to prove, yeah. and like you say, no one's going to give him anything. So if he, if the fans like him, that will be because he's done well. Yeah, um, that's uh, the only way in, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ex- exactly, exactly. But I think he's a, I think he is a good um, player to bring. I think he's a, he's a different player to what we've got, and I think he's a perfect player to come in. And do what he does. I don't think he's going to score loads of goals, but he's mm-hmm. going to be that big lad up top that you can just knock the ball up to if you're struggling a little bit, yeah. or a bit of a plan B. Uh, it's not quite coming off all the the nice passing. Bring on a big lad and, and send some balls into the box. Yeah, it's it's a definite like it's like a route one sort of signing really. 
Pretty much, that, that yeah. That would be like your Matt Smith, essentially, I think. Yeah, yeah. And we, we did something like that in League One. We signed uh, James Hansen from Bradford. Mm-hmm. And he's not a great player. He was never going to be there for, for, much, for, for a long time. But for the four or five games, for four or five games we struggled with keeping the ball up front. And, um, and he came in and did that. Yeah. And I think it's kind of another one of them where like um, you need a you need a plan B, and I think he he would be a good plan B. But I said to my dad, who is the one player that you would not want to sign? And he was the first word. Uh, he was the first name out of his mouth. <laughs> it's just it's just yeah. mad because he's he's also had a bit of a um, a bit of problems with Billy Sharp in the past. Right. Like he he said on a he famously said on a video. Uh, famous in Sheffield, anyway. Um, someone he was he was drunk in a in a club, and someone videoed him and says, "What do you think of Billy Sharp?" I'm not going to uh, repeat what he said, okay. but uh, it wasn't very nice. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, and that obviously did the rounds, and and um, that obviously adds to it. Yeah, more so, to the fire. Yeah. Anyway, we don't know if Gary Medine's going to sign, um, and uh, and yeah, this could be pointless. That last five minutes of us chatting could have been pointless, <laughs> but uh, but anyway, this is the fun part. This is the one, the bit that I've been waiting for all podcast because um, players in common. Mm-hmm. I, I decided to have a look on the internet and see how like what sort of players we what both teams have had United and QPR, uh, and uh, and you did come up with a few. Who did you come up with? Right. So uh, obvious ones for like current time. You've got Connor Washington. Yeah. Uh, Leon Clark was on loan with us twice, so Leon Clark. Yeah, I've got Leon Clark. Yeah. Uh, Paddy Kenny, we signed him from you. Yeah. Uh, Tony Curry. Tony Curry, the legend TC man himself. Um, yeah. There's one other player. I might have got his name wrong. He okay. was a goalkeeper. I th- it, I think it's like that. Is it Darren Richardson or something like that? I think his last name is Richardson. Um, not or, not that I know of. There's not a, that I, I know of. I'm fairly sure we signed him from you at some point, um, okay. and I only know of him because I think my dad mentioned him a while ago, and he, right, he, yeah. he was a goalkeeper, and he had like a lazy eye, like a funny eye or something, um, <laughs> which was always, I thought, oh, that's a bit odd. But I'm, Is this in recent times? Bell. No, this, this must have been like 80s or something like that. Oh, right, that's my dad enough then. So it would have been right. a while ago. Um, and then right. the only manager I could think of was uh, Neil Warnock, but that was... Yeah. Obviously not a player, but that, that's everything I no, can think I've, of. I've got Neil Warnock on my list yeah. anyway. Okay. I think it's probably... Well, I, I, I've done some, some extensive research, okay. and I found some more, um, and the, the most of the ones in my lifetime anyway. I've not gone back because obviously I don't, I don't know. There's a lot of players in there that I wouldn't know. So, uh, we've got Connor Washington. Yep. Got Paddy Kenny. Mm-hmm. Got TC Tony Curry. Yep. Uh, Leon Clark, Neil Warnock. So next is a QPR current player. Well, I believe he's a current player. Okay. And the reason why you might not know this is because he was on loan at. Uh, at uh, he was on loan at United in League One um, when we were under Nigel Adkins. Okay. So. I'm trying to think do you want, now. Do you want to hazard a guess? Uh, can I get a position, or is that cheating? Uh, it might give it away a bit, but is it I Jake would give. Did well? No. Oh, okay. Can't. <laughs> he, uh, he's a defender, anyway. I'll give you that. Okay. It's not like Lynch, is it? No, and 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 the fact that you've not got guessed it yet is making me think that he may not still be there. Oh. But but when I um. When I searched for his name, well, when I found him, well, when I put it, sorry, when I put in QPR players yeah. on Google, he was the first play, one of the first players that came up, so it made me think that he was still there, oh. I didn't check it. Okay, who is it? Let me just check. Let me just make sure. So I'm not... Yes, he does. He does currently play for, for uh, QPR. Alex Baptiste. Oh, Baptiste. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, to say he plays for QPR is a bit of a stretch. Oh, um, right, okay. He's, he's at the club. Um, I'm not <laughs> Does he get on the bench? Uh, okay. Occasionally, we've we've had a couple of players come back, defenders wise, come back from injuries recently, so he's a bit less okay. prone. Yeah, but uh, well, yeah. 
Yeah, we had him on loan uh, for the second part of the season. I can't, who did you sign him from? Uh, Middlesbrough. Yes, I think we had him from Middlesbrough um, okay. in League One for the for the second part of the season. We we liked we liked him. He wasn't he wasn't like outstanding or anything, but he was coming back from an injury, and I think he was trying to get a bit of game time. And uh, and yeah, he, we we would have liked to have signed him, but we weren't that bothered that he, he didn't sign. Yeah, good, uh, good next player, week, but very rarely. It's a very yeah. uh, occasional good performance. Hmm. Uh, next, we've got I think a bit of a QPR legend that you probably wouldn't oh, know God. that played for United. Right. I think he's a legend anyway. I don't know. I don't know. Obviously, with not being a QPR fan, Paul Furlong. Paul Furlong. Oh, mate, no, I love this Paul Furlong. <laughs> One of my first ever players. I wanted to get in the back of my shirt as a kid. Paul Furlong. Oh, what What sort of uh, year was Paul Furlong? Oh God, I couldn't I've, possibly tell you, but I would, I, I would consider him a legend for me. Yeah. Um, because that was, I, I remember when I was growing up, I remember watching Paul Furlong. So I'm going to guess it's around yeah. the early 2000s. 2002 to 2007. Yeah, absolutely. He was, he was on loan at, uh, in 2000. But I'll tell you what happened. He was playing for Birmingham. Mm-hmm. Uh, then he went on loan to you guys. Yeah. Then on loan to us for four games. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And and then on loan to you guys and then signed for you guys. But he scored two goals in four games, though. So um, I mean, he was a machine. That's, he was a machine. Yeah, he was he, a machine. Uh, he's the coach of our under-18s, I think, now. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, right, and his, okay. his son plays for us. Darnell. Right. He's our right-back. Oh. Yeah. Um, next we have uh, a guy that's infamous, but we loved him at Bramall Lane. Okay. That you probably forgot that he ever played for you. He still lives in Sheffield. He lives in actually a dodgy, dodgy place in Sheffield. Right. Um, <laughs> but um, but he he was involved in the Battle of Bramall Lane. Or should I say, he was the main culprit of the Battle of Bramall Lane. Okay. Uh, when we played against West Brom and had about 40,000 players sent off. So, <laughs> did, have you heard about this? Uh, I, know, I know of it. I, I wouldn't yeah. know details. I wouldn't know details. Well, what happened was, it, it's George Santos, by the way. Santos. I know the name. I would, I would never have no. remembered that. See, we loved him. We really liked him. Um, he played for for a while, and then he got sacked that game for what he did. Right. <laughs> two 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 Sheffield United players got sacked: George Santos and Patrick Sufo, because George Santos uh, two footed somebody, and it was it was a re- it was revenge right. because uh, I forgot his name. He played for West Brom, but in the in a fixture, I think it might have been the season before, he elbowed him in the eye and and broke his eye socket. Right. Um, and then that was Santos's first game back, so they brought him on. And first challenge, he went pretty much knee high. Yeah. So uh, so yeah, I, I knew. I think we sacked him, and then you guys took him on. Probably probably on a obviously um, just gave him a contract. Yeah, ten contract. And then last but not least is uh, a player that played for us in the Premiership. One of one of many seasons that we've been in the Premiership. Or should I say, the one season since I finished, <laughs> if you're a high fan. Uh, and he scored loads of goals for us in the Premiership. And then he got he broke his leg halfway through the season. And that's probably one of the main reasons why we got relegated that season. Because he didn't stay fit. Right. And he never, ever came back to what he was like. So he bought him from Leeds. He never came back fully to, to what he was. And I think you guys signed him. I think he'd been at a couple of different clubs, Derby, and I think he might have oh, signed is it, that. I might be wrong. Is it Rob Hulse? It is Rob Hulse, yes. I what suddenly was checked Rob Hulse because I thought, <laughs> I don't know why, but I remembered him getting injured and then we signed him. He was awful. Yeah. He, was, he was so bad for us. He was, oh, do you know what, yeah. though? He was so good for us in the Premiership. Yeah. Because we, he played for, uh, when, he, when he was at Leeds, I think he scored quite a few goals in the Championship. And then when we got promoted, we signed him and we were like, why are we buying this guy? I've never even yeah. heard of him. Uh, and then he scored, prob- I can't remember how many, it might have been 10 in the first half of the season or something like which is good good in the Premiership. Yeah, geez, very good. And then obviously got br- broke his leg um, against Chelsea away. And then we, after that, we got relegated and we signed James Beattie. 
and right. he couldn't get back in the side because Beatty were banging the goals in. And then we ended up letting him go, and it was a bit sad, really, because yeah. he was so good in that Premiership season, and then he was just never the same player after that. Fair enough. Um, so yeah, so that that's uh, that was quite fun. I yeah, enjoyed that. that <laughs> so uh, where are you at the, in the league at the moment? Uh, we are currently ninth. Right. Okay. How many points off the playoffs? Uh, we're four points off. It's goal difference is the big one for us. Um, right. Okay. Because we're what? joint with seventh and eighth. Um, but they've both got 11 goals on us, so... Um, oh, right. Ooh. Yeah, that's... that 7-1 that was was damaging. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, so... the thing, it, it, it takes a long a long time to, to kind of get those seven goals back, doesn't it? Oh, God, yeah. God, yeah. And we're, we're not big scorers ourselves. Like, no. Um, you know, we get three here and there, uh, but it's normally like a 3-2 or, or maybe a 3-1. Yeah. So it's, yeah, it's definitely mm-hmm. throwing it all back. Yeah, well, funny you should say uh, goal difference because we were miles behind, like likes of West Brom and Leeds and stuff, and we our goal difference in the last three games is nine goals for and one against. Yeah, you guys are is so it plus seventeen? I, I don't think, know. I think I, can't I think tell you're you. only three behind West Brom and they score for mm. fun. Like yeah, well they scored the seven, didn't they? Well, yeah, yeah, funny. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, where do you think you're going to finish this season? Um, honestly, being realistic, looking at the other teams and stuff in the league, I personally, mm. I said at the start of the season, top ten, and I'll be ecstatic. Yeah. Um, and I'm still, I'm still very much on that. A lot of people are calling for playoffs. A lot of people are saying that we should make a push for it and we should do this. If we don't finish playoffs, I won't consider it a failed season. I won't consider it a bad run or anything like that, especially with where mm. we started. Mm. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. And. Honestly, I think if we were to, and again, this is big long shots, if we say we got into first when we went up, I don't think we're ready yet. I think we need another season to get some of our youth players a little bit nearer the front, like the starting team. Um, yeah. Like, we've our, our bench now, I know you mentioned earlier, your bench you don't find overly sort of in, encouraging. No. I think, honestly, and this could be a bit of a biased opinion, I think we have one of the best benches in the league in regards to youth players and, and what those players can do. Mm. Um, right. I, I think I think Bright Aside Samuel is so unlucky to not be in the starting eleven. He's yeah. so he really could be. Um, but tangent. Um, but I honestly think that <laughs> with with the depth and stuff that we have, I'm I'm going to say we're either going to finish sixth or seventh. Like we're going right, to either okay. just make it or just fall short. That's that's my honest evaluation. I think. Right. Well. Hit it here first, guys. Yeah. Um, and uh, funny you should say that, that's what I think about Sheffield United as well. Do you really? I'm t- if, yeah. if you guys finish sixth and we finish seventh, or vice versa, mm. then th- that is a sign from someone. It's a sign from the gods. I'm going to buy a lottery well, ticket. <laughs> well, I think I'm being more pessimistic than I probably should be. But I've seen it all before. Like last season, we we uh, fell away, and a lot of a lot of people are saying that we're going to fall away. And I think we will we will have another dip at some point. Um, but uh, but yeah, we're playing some really good football at the moment. We're scoring goals at the moment. I think once the the goals if the goals dry up, we'll struggle. And I know that sounds a daft thing to say because that's true of of, uh, of anyone. Yeah, but, but I get you. I get you. We we that happened last season. The goals dried up, and we we conceded daft goals, and then you lose confidence. And they they they're definitely a confidence team because they they know that they're good enough. But I think that again, looking at team sheets, sometimes it's like wow, we're playing against Tammy Abraham, playing yeah. against uh, Jack Grealish, who who was um, like tipped to go to whoever it was for like twenty yeah. thirty million yeah. or whatever. So. Yeah, yeah, so I, 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 worst case scenario, I think we'd just miss out on the playoffs. Right. Um, but, but the way that they've been playing recently, ah, I don't know. It could be anywhere. I know I'm not really helping here, but it's <laughs> it's difficult to say because of last season what happened. We're playing really really good football. If it was kind of like ten years ago, I'd be like, yeah yeah, we're going for we're going we're going for top two. But I just the the such, um, the such like I don't know how to explain it. The 
they're, uh, they're a young side. Well, some, mm. some are, we've got a lot of young players. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we've got a lot of uh, inexperienced players. That's that's what I'm looking for. Inexperienced, and I think that that may be a problem for us. But if they carry on playing how they're playing, then we've got to aim for top two, surely. Yeah. Um, I think I do think Norwich might fall away, and I know a lot of people say this, and Norwich fans will probably hate me for saying that, <laughs> but. I, th- I honestly think that Leeds and West Brom will go up top two. I th- I think I'm I'm kind of struggling to <coughs> pick the actual top two because obviously Leeds mm. Leeds are quite infamous for for um, yeah. bottle jobbing Falling as apart. well. Yeah. Um. I I think the four teams most likely to go up are the top four right now. So Leeds, Norwich, you guys, and West Brom. I mm. I personally pick you guys to make it to the um, playoff finals. That that I genuinely think will be the case. I think you guys will be there. I, mm. I think it's going to be Leeds and Norwich. I do think they're both going to hold on and stay top two. And I see, right, a, West, okay. I see a West Brom, Sheffield United uh, player final, personally. Ooh, and I've, I've been on. saying that for a little while, so I've been really I've been bigging you boys up. Um, mm. I, I personally think that that's, that's going to be... I, I'm not saying I don't think you guys have got it in you to get top two. I think yeah. it's honestly more that the two teams there, I just... Because it's being so pushed that they're both going to bottle it they're both going to mm. mess up I personally just think that I just I think this season they're both going to stay up there and I think yeah. they're two of the best teams in the league um, I'd say honestly West Brom and probably Villa I probably think they're actually the best two teams in the league West Brom and Villa yeah um, but on paper on paper yeah, anyway. yeah, on paper, yeah. yeah definitely um, so I think I think West Brom will definitely make a push for it but I think mm. it'll be you guys and West Brom in the in the player finals that's that's my yeah. early early prediction yeah Okay, well, uh, I, I I agree with you. I think that West Brom and Villa on paper have the best squads, mm-hmm. and I can't believe what's what's happened with Villa. To be fair, oh, they've course. got a really good manager now. Yeah. They've got a really good manager. So if they, I, I think if they don't finish in the playoffs, I think they will finish in the playoffs. If I'm honest, uh, and if they don't finish in the playoffs, I think they'll be a very very good shout for for going up next season. Mm. I um, think it's whether they get to keep Abraham because there's a lot of talk of him being recalled um, yeah. to either go out on loan somewhere else or, or in the Prem or mm. potentially be playing at Chelsea because obviously Morata's not quite doing it. Giroud's got that knock now. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's honestly, it's whether they can keep hold of Abraham. That's that's the win factor for me. They've got other great players, but he, yeah. he's a different class. Yeah, definitely. Um so yeah, so so um, I think we I think we'll probably finish in the playoffs. I hope we finish in the playoffs. That is the kind of uh, I'd, I'm gonna say that is the worst case scenario. Like we we can't finish outside the playoffs now. We're I think we're like six or seven points in the playoffs, and we we need to stay there. We need to carry on winning games. I think a lot of pro, uh, a lot of people have been saying that the reason why we. are People think we're gonna we're not gonna make it is because we're not beating the teams towards the top, but we're still third. Like we've yeah. lost, we've pretty much lost. Other than Derby, we've lost to oh and Norwich. But we we played Norwich when Norwich weren't who they were. Yeah, they were yeah. kind of, they were kind of like mid table at that point. But we we've lost to Leeds, we've lost to Forest, we've lost to West Brom, um, we've lost to. Um, Stoke, I don't know if Stoke are in there, but we, we've lost to a lot of big teams anyway, um, and a lot of people are saying that we're not going to stay up there because we can't beat the big teams, but I think we've just had a bit of bad luck again. Like Leeds, who would have known that Henderson would have passed it straight yeah. to their lad to, to, to put it back in there? Mm. And things like that, I think we've just had a bit of... Oh, it were, it were Middlesbrough as well, the other team that I was looking for. Oh, right, yeah. Um, so, um, so, yeah, I, th- I think I think it's just been a bit of bad luck, and uh, I think we'll be fine. We, sh- we should easily finish in the playoffs, um, but uh, you never know. You never know what could happen with uh, with this championship, because everybody's beating each other, <laughs> yeah, aren't they? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Definitely. So, predictions for the game. Hmm. Um, I think going into it, I mean... Looking, I know that form, like I said to you, we're a big, big form team, and I think form is always a tricky one to to kind of base stuff off because you get so many, so many upsets, especially in the championship. Form mm. only gets you so far. It's yeah. whether you're actually playing well. That's the big, big thing. Mm. Um, I genuinely think there's going to be. I think both teams are going to score. 
Because mm. I think we were, I was looking at um, a couple of stats, and for both of us, um, in our last six, I think both teams have scored in 50% of the games for both yeah. teams. I'll um, go with that, yeah. And I think... Uh, I'm tra- I think my head, my head honestly, is saying like a 1-1. Mm. Um, because I think... I think we're finding a bit of form. Like I said, we played really, really well against Villa. Um, mm. I think the, the game against Leeds tomorrow, I think we will shake things up a little bit. So I think we'll have a bit of a few players with a bit of um, have a bit of a rest. And yeah. I think as long as we play well, as long as we don't go out and get embarrassed by Leeds, I think best, absolutely best case scenario is we mm. actually manage to beat Leeds, mm. and that just fills us with even more confidence. And I think we go in very, very confident against you guys, and I think that will helpful. Hopefully, uh, hopefully carry us through. But I, in a, mm. in an honest prediction, I'm going to say, um, one one. Okay. Um, from I was thinking, I th- I think we're going to win. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're the home team. Yeah, yeah. We're in form. We're third in the league. I'm, I've got to say that we're going to win. Um, but again, it's it's a it's a tough it's a tough year. There's a lot of good teams in the championship. Everyone's beating everyone. You never yeah, know. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna go for a two one win. Like you said, we we concede goals, we score goals. There's not yeah. many there's not there's not been many games this season where we've not scored a goal or not conceded a goal. So uh so yeah, you're probably right with that one. Um hopefully it's gonna be entertaining. Oh, I it think it's us- gonna be a very it usually is. Game. Yeah, yeah. Because it's also it's such a close fixture. I didn't realise how close the game like how close Sort of stats wise in regards to games that Sheffield have won, we've won, and like draws. Do you know, do you know the oh, stats right. of that? No, I don't know. Um, we've beaten you 18 times, mm-hmm. you've beaten us 17 times, and we've drawn 19 times. Wow. That's, cr- that's crazy close. That is. That I didn't realise it was that close. I honestly thought, yeah. we'd, I thought we'd beaten you a few more times than that. Um, I would have thought so, yeah. But it's, I mean, it, like recent times, I think the last three times we've played you. We've lost twice and beat you once. Um, yeah. So in recent times, you guys have definitely been the, the yeah. better team. I re- uh, I saw something. I think someone put something on Twitter of um, when we beat you when we were in League One and you were in the Premiership. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that was uh, unexpected. Yeah, I think we won three. We three nil. I think it was three. Yeah, three nil. I think. Really unexpected game. Uh, Campbell Rice scored two goals, <laughs> which is just mad. To yeah. think where we we've, we've come from, Campbell playing Campbell Rice, um, headless chicken running at defenders, <laughs> to where we're third in the championship now. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. And so quickly yeah. as well. It's a very. It's been a very quick turnaround. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Definitely. Well, we've done the opposite of uh, of Sunderland, really. We've, yeah, uh, pretty much. We've gone, but. Um, but yeah, it, like things can change just like that. Though, can't they? Look at Brentford. Brentford were brilliant uh, yeah, last high. season, and then look at them now. They, they, all it does is take take uh, losing a losing a key player, losing a manager, something like that. Yeah. And that that's the one thing that I'm most worried about. Being like, I would happily lose any other players, like any of the players, to not lose Wilder. Yeah, but that that's is the main enough. thing. That is the main thing because. The team is the team, but Wilder kind of has, has got the best out of Makes all the these players. Are. Yeah, yeah. yeah and and I, if if another, if another manager came in, if say Wilder went off to bigger and better things, and then um, and then we we brought in just I don't know, say Steve Bruce. I know he's gone to Wednesday, but he's the yeah. only manager I could think of the top of my head. Say he came in, he would play four at the back. Maybe four in midfield. To you'd lose the whole way that we play, yeah, and it wouldn't be the same. Style. Yeah, it wouldn't be the it wouldn't be the same team because I don't know any any um, club in the world that play the way that we do. It's a it's a very very weird way of playing, and um, yeah, I don't I don't think a manager could come in and just emulate the and same. Recreate it. Yeah, yeah. yeah I don't think no. it would happen like that. No, because like I said, no other managers kind of play that formation. A lot of managers might play a three-five-two or a or a five-three-two or whatever, but it's just a, a crazy formation. And we have been found out in the past. I remember in League One we lost to uh, Walsall three times in the season that we got promoted to Championship, 
and every time they seem to have just figured it out because yeah. we we have one we have Egan at the back the whole the whole match. Mm -hmm. a, a, anyone else can go anywhere. It's 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 mad, and they kind of caught us on the break so many times. And they're the only team that's actually done that since yeah. Wilder's <laughs> been the manager. Nobody else is is um, is dominated as much as uh, dominated us as much as Walsall which is yeah. a weird thing it's like to a say weird probably. Tonight. yeah <laughs> yeah exactly exactly so uh so yeah I think I think we're uh, we're ready to wrap up really I think, I think we've so. spoken about most topics um if anyone in the comments uh wants to add something to it let us know uh, what you thought of the podcast anything any other topics that you want us to talk about like I say, obviously it's not going to be a Sheffield United QPR one next time because we're only playing each other um, next week. Yeah. So, but if, if there's any other topics that you want us to talk about, we will do. Obviously, me and Hirsty will go away and think about what we what we want to talk about. We're going to try and do most weeks if that's possible. I've uh, I've asked Hirsty already, but um, I I don't want to I don't want to say we will definitely be doing a podcast every single week because obviously. I might, might be busy, first you might be busy. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. So, uh, so yeah, I'll, I'll let you say goodbye first of all, Mr. Hurst. Yeah, well, thank you so much for having me on. Um, and this has been, it's been a lot of fun. I'm, I'm hoping mm. it's as many weeks as possible, but uh, thank you very much. It would be nice. Uh, yeah, let us know if you think it was successful in the comments. And, uh, and yeah, goodbye. Oh, and stay good, Nick, obviously. <laughs> I can't Obviously. end. I can't end a video with just saying goodbye, can I? Really? <laughs> and I'll let you say your catchphrase as well, Hurston. Yes, and of course, look after yourselves.